are we? My father is third generation Japanese from Hawaii. And my mother is mostly Irish with roots in Tennessee and places south. Growing up, we moved 11 times. So my sister and I ask this question often, where are we? Having two different family cultures and many different homes gave me a strong drive to anchor to my surroundings for a sense of identity and a sense of place. In our moves across the country, many of the towns we passed blurred together. Occasionally, I'd see a sign that declared, you are here. Not a physical sign or, um, whoops, or a mark on my sister's hand-drawn maps, but a simple visual moment that gave voice to place as it flickered past my window. Like the crown of giant sunflowers filling a tiny Kansas yard at dusk and drifting behind us with the last of the setting sun. When I was five, we moved from California to Ohio. And I remember being wrapped in a quilt made of old kimonos and faded aloha shirts. I studied these fabrics rolling in small hills across my knees. They whispered to me of rustling sugarcane fields, of great aunts cooling off in rice bag slips, of pinwheels made of flowers and boats made of leaves. They comforted me with thoughts of family on islands far away. Seeing such sights and textures gave me a strong sense of belonging and a sense of bearing. They hinted at human stories and the specialness of place. It was these family trips and the fading of family storytellers that shaped my interest in creating art that is rooted in memory and heritage. Art that answers that question, where are we? I am an artist and arts educator. I began my journey as a digital artist, creating art for gaming and um, educational companies. But as my children were born, I stopped focusing on virtual landscapes and began to focus on the ones we were rooted to as a family. I took wire and began to shape it into family stories. This abstract kimono celebrates the game of rock, paper, scissors, or John Ken Poe, as my father and his classmates called it, on Maui. It was often games, food, and ghost stories that connected the different ethnic groups on the plantations. Over time, I began to integrate my grandfather's photography and other artifacts from my family. This piece is about hope. It is shaped as a butterfly because butterflies were the first forms of new life seen on the bomb landscapes of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, area where my relatives were from. My grandfather was a first lieutenant in the US Army during World War II, and he was in the Pacific arena as an interpreter, a Japanese interpreter. After the war, he helped arrange for rice to be sent from Hawaii relatives to relatives in Japan who were starving. And in exchange, the Japanese relatives sent back silks and kimonos. Bits of these fabrics and my grandfather's photography um, and bombing leaflets are included in this piece. Sorry, there we go. The separation of a few generations can loosen our rootedness, rootedness to a homeland. This piece has an elevated layer of plastic sushi grass over old family rice bag. To this day, my Hawaii relatives will go out into their neighbor, into the yards and um, cut tea leaves to shape for garnish for the sushi platter so they look beautiful. Never would they consider using plastic garnish. In modern Japan, however, plastic is the norm. This reality could only arise in a Japan yard from my family's collective memory by both war and industrialization. Over time, my pieces got bigger, and they got smaller. <laughs> and as I began to exhibit in museums and galleries, I discovered that people wanted to talk. They wanted to talk about their own personal stories that my artwork triggered. And their stories were fascinating. And it took my art away from asking, where am I and who am I, to inviting others to answering, where are we and who are we? My first steps into collaborative art were during my De Young Museum residency, at which I sat at a table, kind of like at a quilt, quilting table, and daily I sat with visitors to create small quilt tiles made of recycled materials from the museum, as well as from my installations. 
Over a period of a month, the tapestry grew in the window of the gallery. And at the end, I scanned some of the visitor tile to create a digital textile. And here's my daughter wearing it. <laughs> Once. I just want to say that these tiles were in the pattern of, uh, it's called shipo in Japanese and double wedding ring in English. So we used a template to create our tiles, even though each one looked different and unique. Well, what, what happens when you don't provide a template? When you just ask, where are we? Fusionware SV was an experiment conducted in collaboration with an artist named Colleen Quinn and architect um, Rick Lee for the San Jose Museum of Quilts and Textiles. And the question we asked ourselves and others was, uh, what is Silicon Valley? How do we capture that in, in imagery? How do you capture a place with no concrete boundaries? Over a period of a few months, we invited people to submit images to a Flickr set. And these, in turn, inspired digital textiles that I created. I also conducted workshops that invited the public to design their own textiles reflecting on place. Colleen Quinn went through this whole body of fabrics and created two artwork garments that reflected on the physical and emotional landscape of Silicon Valley. Architect Rick Lee created a ceiling installation that reflected back facets of the viewer and the garments, creating a moving collage of people in place. Well, this was a successful experiment, but it left me wanting more. I wanted to see how I could explore place actually out in the street. So knowing that Allen Rock San Jose had tattered and faded street banners that hung all year round, I knew I wanted to work with students in this area and design new banners for their street. So after securing grants, I began a journey with students, fifth graders in Allen Rock and fourth graders in Hilo, Hawaii, as they answered that question, where are we, in patterned drawings and written statements, they shared their ideas using a program called VoiceThread, and they learned about each other's special places. They created Japanese wrapping cloths from their patterns. And the San Jose students, with an expanded understanding of visual vocabulary, went out into their neighborhoods with single-use cameras to photo document what was special about their community. They took these photos into a software program called Repper, where they created seamless repeat pattern tiles, that they then collaboratively in teams created street banners, that they then presented to the city of San Jose, and these were installed on the street of Allen Rock to replace the faded and tattered ones. There were 17 banners created. Uh, they are still up today. Um, we also shared back their statements, their collaborative statements on the meaning of their banners uh, via bus stop shelters and store windows. Well, banners are up high and not really in our physical immediate spaces, but fences are. And the San Jose Japan Town Mural Project uh, transformed a huge empty lot with 60 colorful murals. Mm. Yeah, this is wonderful. This project was designed by artist Tommy Rast, and uh, I was among the artists who created murals for this project. The mural I depicted was of my daughter, Emily, and anchoring it closer to place, I scanned artifacts that were dug up from immediately behind the fence in that empty lot. And these are artifacts from meals eaten here in the past. Uh, Chinese uh, meals, the, the, chop, the bones cut smaller, be able to use chopsticks, and a porcelain bowl from when this was an early Japan town. Well, much of this art in this era speaks to its history as a Japan town and not so much to its changing demographics. Today, 83% of the students are Hispanic, and there's a growing Ethiopian population. So I wanted to work with a local middle school and engaging students more deeply in this mural project. Collaborating with a nonprofit called Next Vista for Learning and Burnett Middle School, I worked with students in creating video interviews with the mural artists. The mutual respect and interest that the students and artists had in each other was super inspiring. And the resulting videos were incorporated into QR codes integrated into the murals themselves so that people walking by could learn more about the project and their own community through the lens of the students. Well, as a daughter of a toy designer, I grew up in a house where brainstorming an idea in cardboard was as familiar as sketching it in paper. It was really fun. And I saw that my children were enjoying this kind of making as well, but they were not doing it in school. So when the 01 Biennial invited me to create a digital project for youth exploring place, I knew I wanted to also have a hand-making, hands-on component. So the challenge was 
I invite students in San Jose and across the country to reimagine the bus stop shelter. Seeking Shelter invited, invited students to integrate more community needs and environmental needs into their bus stop designs. They created collaborative cardboard models that we shared on Instagram. They refined their ideas in uh, the cab crew SketchUp. And all their ideas inspired a physical full-scale installation excuse me, <clears throat> that my father and I created for the Biennial. People were able to explore students' ideas for a bus stop. And in and around this bus stop, students talked back to the community the workshops that they had explored in exploring their ideas and creativity and paper models, digital models, and even my parents got into the act of uh, inventing a bus stop shelter. <laughs> a few months after this project ended, I had the opportunity to work on a real public transit art project with youth. And this was super exciting because I feel that when students' voices are shared back in the permanent landscape of their communities, they know they have a valued voice in that community. Working with the Valley Transit Authority and a local school in San Jose, I invited students to find the poetry in their neighborhood, in written statements, in photography, in digital patterns, in hand-drawn patterns, and these were translated into uh, concrete lane dividers, medians for freeway overpass, as well as intrigate pillars made of concrete um, and laser cut steel. Uh, this is a pedestrian bike overpass at Tully and 101 in San Jose, sharing back students' visions of what is special about the community. Well, how do you share back ideas and thoughts of many different cultures and many different histories along a whole transit route? Well, the Allen Rock BRT project will, will be sharing back a community's idea on place at 22 bus stop shelters. Wow. Working with Merge Conceptual Design, I went out to the community and I met with individuals and organizations and schools and once again we asked ourselves, where are we? What is special about this spot, this particular neighborhood? And students answered that question in hand-drawn maps and uh, moving automata. A Baptist church, the parishioners at a church shared back their amazing stories behind the church hats at a tea event. And their actual hats would be shared back on the glass windscreen at the bus stop near their church. I wandered into, I literally wandered, I wandered into a Buddhist temple and learned how to make a paper lotus flower from a monk as students streamed into the temple for after school classes. From these intimate insights into community, Merge Conceptual Design is creating patterns unique for each bus stop along this route. And from the patterns, a rhythm will be created along the whole route that speaks to a larger community. After so many workshops, I find that the ones I enjoy the most are the ones in which I'm very close on the learning curve with the participants. In the Serving of Shapes project done with the Santa Clara University's Day to Say Museum, we invited people to explore local history, identity, through the prism of food, agriculture, and 3D printing. And it was so much fun to see people's surprise on their faces as they explored how to create CAD drawings that reflected their ideas. This is my son helping teach um, one of the workshops. It was fascinating to see people's interest in watching the process of 3D printing and exploring expressing their ideas using different types of tools of 3D printing. To tie the experience, to try to engage people in the theme more tightly, um, I created a few pieces. Uh, this one reflects on the last time kimonos were ever hung out to dry on the farm fields of Santa Clara Valley, 48 hours before internment. At one time, uh, cherry trees, all kinds of fruit trees covered Santa Clara Valley. And in the, in the spring, when the petals fell, it looked like it was actually snowing. These workshops were so much fun. They felt like a giant family picnic reunion. Um, complete with the picnic tablecloths. The resulting objects were displayed at the museum, at a library and, and a community center where I also conducted the workshops. Uh, and we also created giant um, picnic tablecloths capturing everybody's ideas. There's sketches and 3D designs and these were also displayed in all the sites. Well, I really also want to show this. This is a really um, 
kind of impromptu project. My son and I went on, into East San Jose and into Japantown to engage people just walking by in the process of 3D printing. And we had a really great time engaging people in making netsuke, Japanese charms, printing them out for people who visited and happened to just walk by the cart. And people, it turned out, really enjoyed taking pictures with their charms, with us, with the cart, with each other. And they went away smiling with their objects. Well, where are we? Who are we? These questions have introduced me to do new people, places, and tools. They've propelled me on journeys and just bring such a sight, excitement to my work. I feel that when we take these collective, collaborative leaps of faith, in these moments, we are most connected to place and community. Where are we? when we're not engaged in our public spaces and the design of them, anywhere and nowhere. It has been through teasing out the simple visual cues in our daily lives that I believe that we can illuminate a sense of collective and individual identity that is both familiar and surprising. It has been through asking, where are we? Who are we? That I've come to realize that where we are is home and who we are is family. So thank you.